we're going to take a simple scientific dive into team. Thoughts are electrical, emotions are magnetic. And together they create an electromagnetic field around the body that is in constant communication with the electromagnetic field that exists throughout the universe. Your brain, in fact your entire body, is comprised of a tight network of nerve cells and they all interact with one another and they generate an overall electrical field. In fact, where there's a nerve cell, there's electricity. And given that you're surrounded by your own electric field, your brain waves are governed by the same force as those tiny photon particles that travel through the universe at the speed of light. In fact, the light seen coming from a star and the energy of your mind are one and the same type. Pretty mind-blowing, eh? And this is where it gets really interesting, because your thoughts are formed in this electrical field. So what you're hearing now and the words that your mind is processing are all the same electrical impulses that are made of the same energy as everything else in the universe. So just park that information for a moment whilst we ask the question, where does the magnetism come into it? The heart, in addition to its electrical activity, also generates a strong magnetic field. So the heart and the mind together send out emotional information, which is then communicated to the electromagnetic fields of the people all around us. And they, in turn, are communicating their information to us. You know the feeling when you walk into a room that has a bad vibe to it because what you're experiencing through your own energy field is the lower vibrational frequency of someone else's energy field. It's been scientifically measured that negative emotions make our field weaker while positive emotions strengthen it. The scientist and philosopher uh, Dr David Hawkins, he created an energy map which shows the vibrational frequency of different emotions, which he numbered between one and a thousand. So you've got the emotions of reason, love, joy, peace, <coughs> excuse me, they're all between 400 and 600, whereas the emotions of shame, guilt, anger and fear are all below 150. Now what he also discovered through this research is that any emotion below 200 actually causes cells to die. So this is why it's so important, so crucial to our well-being that we manage to regulate and manage our emotions well. So let's just go back to thoughts. What happens to them when we release them? Do they disappear? No, they don't because the forms of energy, which is always in constant motion, seeking that which is similar in a vibrational frequency to itself. So when you attach an emotion to the thought form, that then acts like a magnet and that energy will seek out other similar emotions from the universal electromagnetic field. So if we can run with the idea that, you know, energy likes to find other energy that is the same as itself. In other words, like finds like. Then the way I kind of think about this and, and try to put it into a very simple explanation is if you can imagine these clusters of energy, in other words, the clusters of our thoughts and emotions, and we send them out there and they mix up with all other kinds of energy that are of a similar vibration, then I like to think in a way, it keeps it really simple for me, this is why I like it, I like to think of it in a, in a sense that they, they, the energy clusters together and they create clouds. Now, when a cloud gets full enough, it will rain. So my lovely idea here is it's what kind of cloud do I want to stand under? Do I want to stand under the lovely cluster of energy cloud that has gorgeous thoughts in it and have that rain down upon me with lovely you know, kindness, compassion, understanding? Or do I want to be adding to the cloud of hatred, fear, resentment, jealousy, and that cloud gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And because those are the thoughts that I'm sending out, that's the cloud that then decides to rain on top of me. You might find that a very simplistic way of looking at things, but for me, it works. I hope it works for you too. That's quite a lot of food for thought, isn't it? And I invite you to listen to it again at some point if it resonates with you. In the meantime, let's take a look at what materials you're going to need to make your lovely transformative cards. 
that are going to bring about more awareness for you, for your own growth and transformation, and they're going to really help you to refocus the way you think about things.